You looking at me? Well, this compressor is shot. Yay! Hi, everybody, and welcome back. So today, we are dealing with the compressor that if you remember from previous videos, we diagnosed that this compressor is mechanically seized. The windings are okay, we measured them. We didn't mega on them, but we did uh, measure resistance. And uh, the refrigerant, I didn't pull any oil, extra oil out of the evaporator, so I know it didn't travel into there. So, the compressor's dead. We diagnosed that it's dead. I thought it'd be interesting to cut this thing open and see what's inside. Maybe we can find out exactly why it's dead. I mean, other than being mechanically seized up. This is called a fully hermetic compressor. Now what that means is that a hermetic compressor has a completely sealed environment. That means once it's all put together and the system is built and ev evacuated, there's no moisture getting in there. You put the refrigerant in, it's done, it's tight. There are no gaskets, there are no external drives. Everything is built in. So the problem with that is it can't come apart very easily. And because of that, and the cheap nature of these compressors, most of the time these things are just pitched in the trash. So very rarely has anybody actually seen what's inside of one of these compressors. What we're going to do is use the grinder and possibly several other cutting utensils to open this up and pull it apart, see what's inside, check for oil, how much oil, and maybe even do an acid test on the oil, and check the bearings and the piston and the condition of the motor windings. So we'll pull the thing apart, we'll get to see what's involved inside of it, and maybe have a little fun doing so. Remember our safety. And yes, these are safety glasses. Alrighty, ladies and gents, let's see what's inside. Well, that's a uh, what? Okay. It is definitely not what I was expecting. Uh, I think I have to grind this edge down a little bit further. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what I found. So in case you're interested, this is the discharge port. This right here is the discharge. And it just blanks right there. Yep. Which means the whole top half of this uh, compressor is discharge which is actually kind of surprising when you see what I'm talking about if you notice that is the motor windings so they literally have the motor windings inside of the discharge gas which is usually hot remember what comes out of a compressor if you want to go back and review that video uh, it's just a couple videos back what comes out of a compressor is hot superheated 
gas. I had to open it up the rest of the way, a little, uh, a little redneckish because uh, my grinding wheel, <laughs> my grinding wheel disappeared. <laughs> so we got it open the rest of the way, but uh, I didn't want to show that on film because that was kind of gross. Now, one thing I'd like to note here: we barely got any oil out of this thing, so that oil went somewhere probably in the condenser and so now that oil is probably in the new system whatever so the new system has extra oil all right uh so either way the the oil was probably a very large contributing factor because i guarantee you the oil didn't even fill up this here sump this is the bottom of the compressor the bottom right remember we cut the feet off this end so this is the top end and this is the bottom end. Now I figured we can go in here even further. Now one thing I can't get past, these here spot welds are holding on what appears to be the stator inside. So we're not gonna get past that. But let's take off this here ring and uh, see if we can't see what's in there yet. Now I tell you, they probably put, they probably did it this way. This is really upside down compared to the standard uh, compressor format. Um, I mean, they do call this a rotary compressor, so I don't know, maybe it's different. That's why I wanted to open this up, because they call it a rotary compressor, but I don't know, I can't see the thing not having pistons. But this doesn't appear to have a cylinder, so maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. You gonna come? Oh. There we go. Holy smokes. Would you look at that. So, so yeah. This is indeed a rotary compressor. Look at this, guys. That is a rotary compressor. So if we spin this around, see how this eccentric moves? And this here, uh, I guess I'm going to call it a thrust seal. I don't know the exact terminology at this point. On a rotary wankle, they would call this, actually, they, they wouldn't call this an apex seal, but it does the same job as an apex seal. But, uh, yeah, so, there you go. That is a rotary compressor. That is different. So, I am used to seeing this in an oil pump. Or even a vacuum pump. I've seen this style in uh, big industrial vacuum pumps. But I've never seen this in an air conditioning compressor. So that is... I'm liking it. That's pretty awesome. And this here little piece right here provides the seal for that. And check it out. Get too much pressure in there. That'll just push back. So there you go. That is a rotary compressor. This, this is the suction and this is the discharge. And I just figured this out because this is the suction line right here. So suction line's going right into there. Let's see if I can get a better camera angle. So the suction line's going right into there. So then this has to be the discharge. So I was spinning it backwards. So it spins like this. So sucks in, squeezes it out. Sucks it in, squeezes it out, sucks it in, squeezes it out. So it sucks it in here, pumps it around, squeezes it out here. You know, you don't have a need for an oil pump because that's that's literally just a bushing. Nothing fancy. I mean, there's there's not even like a tiny amount. I mean, there is 
a little bit of scoring on the edge there but not enough I can drag my fingernail across I can't catch it on my fingernail so it's fine this out oh, there we go pull that seal out there that's the head so what happens is if you notice these here uh, little grooves in there so this thing is sitting submerged in oil that's why they put it upside down so this thing sits here and it's submerged in oil and this allows the oil to seep in as well as the shaft is hollow and there's little fingers inside the shaft I don't know if you can see it very well but there's little fingers inside the shaft and a little opening right here to allow lubrication to travel so the thing literally just sits in the oil that's why they put it upside down so it sits in the oil and gets all the lubrication it needs that way that's what it looks like to me little fingers to hold that on the spring we can put that back up in there clean the, the dirt off of this normally guys I would say <laughs> you gotta be very careful about dirt in these things but this is a dead compressor this compressor now here's the thing that gets me this compressor was mechanically seized it wouldn't start so I don't know so that concludes our soiree into disassembling cutting open and disassembling this here compressor I learned something new today doing this that this is indeed a rotary compressor I believe technically or specifically it's a rotary vein style compressor uh, because it has that one vein I believe technically that's a vein I could be wrong um, but I'm pretty sure that's that is the it um, other vein style pumps that I've seen like that use several different veins actually on the rotor itself so this one the vein doesn't move it's in the stator but technically it is a vein um, so yeah it's a rotary vein style compressor it does not have cylinders it does not have pistons it is not reciprocating it does not have valves in fact it is similar in operation to a scroll compressor but it's only one stage whereas scrolls are several stages sort of and it's a lot simpler than a scroll compressor and technically there's a moving part that causes friction whereas a scroll compressor they don't actually well yes they do touch right on the ends they do touch but uh, so yeah similar to a scroll compressor but not quite a lot simpler operation it is indeed a rotary vein there are no valves there are no pistons it is dependent on the direction of rotation to dictate which is suction and which is discharge so because of that it doesn't need since it's always spinning one direction it doesn't need valves uh, to do the same job in this case all that together just makes it cheaper so it's a lot less expensive to make the compressor uh, then they go as far as to flip the thing upside down and submerge it in oil like literally submerge the head of the compressor in oil so that they don't need to worry about a lubrication system it, it literally is it's in oil so it, it picks it up it slings it around it's good to go um, this thing was mechanically seized up I'm not hundred percent sure why it could have been a liquid lock scenario I doubt it but it could have been it could have been an oil lock scenario but again I doubt it um, so I'm, I'm not sure why it locked up to be very honest with you there are no signs of overheating on the coils there is no signs of overheating or friction inside the the, the rotor uh, so I don't know it's a mystery but now you guys know so maybe you learned something hopefully you learned something if you were paying attention you definitely learned something and uh, and I hope you enjoyed it so thank you for watching 
If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, hit the thumbs down. And again, please say why if you didn't. I appreciate the input. And uh, please make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon to make sure you're notified when the videos come out. And uh, thank you very much. Y'all have a good night. Goodbye. Uh-oh.